Hello beautiful soul, welcome to Blissfully Bloom. I'm Victoria LeBlanc, a self-love and soulful coach, and I'm your host. The intention of this podcast is to guide women to fall in love with themselves, embody confidence, and drop the stories of not good enough. Your soul will awaken to the truth that you have always been worthy. In this remembering, you no longer wait for permission, validation, or acceptance. You choose yourself, and you become a woman who blissfully blooms like a rose, showing the world your authentic self, talents, and gifts, because it's your birthright. This episode is brought to you by Awaken Your Love, my self-love retreat. Do you feel like you have to constantly fight for your worth? Does your inner voice make you feel insecure and disconnected from love? Do you struggle with body acceptance and feel ashamed to look in the mirror? Would you rather start cultivating your love from within so that you can set yourself free from putting a filter on who you are and feel empowered to be the most authentic version of you? No matter where you are at on your self-love journey, I want to invite you to my women's retreat, Awaken Your Love. This will be a magical and transformative experience. You are the one person that you are required to spend the rest of your life with. It's time to start giving yourself the gift of your own love. You are worthy of it. Now, some of the benefits of coming to this retreat is that you will discover your soul sister tribe. You're going to learn different self-love practices and rituals to implement in your own life. You'll deepen and strengthen your relationship with yourself. You'll have time to relax, reset, and recharge your mind, body, and soul. As a self-love and soulful coach, I will host three different workshops on limiting beliefs, body acceptance, and inner child healing. I will also guide you through various self-love rituals such as breath work, yoga, embodiment, women's self-love circles, and sound bowl healing sessions. There will also be an option for you to participate in a self-love photo shoot. On top of that, we will also explore various hiking trails and really immerse ourselves in nature. The dates for this retreat will be on May 19th through May 22nd of 2023. And I'm so excited to tell you that it's going to be in Basalt, Colorado. And we are going to be just 15 minutes away from Maroon Bells. And when I tell you, this is just such like a breathtaking spot to be. Make sure to claim your spot, okay? Because there's only five of them. And you can click on the link called Book Retreats in the show notes, or you can also head to my Instagram bio at blissfully.bloom. I'm so excited. I hope to see you there. Hello there, and welcome back to Blissfully Bloom. I feel really calm and relaxed right now. I just got back from the yoga studio and I did a vinyasa flow and I feel like every single time that I leave the studio I feel more centered and just connected with my authentic self and that connecting with that inner stillness from within and I just I don't know you can feel one way stepping onto the mat and then a whole other way leaving the mat so that is really what I love about yoga and I am gonna come and do an episode I felt really inspired to record today about letting go of control and how to surrender to the unknown I feel like it's talked about a lot and you might have heard the term surrender here and just surrender, just simply surrender, but what does this actually mean and what does this look like, right? I think that first it comes to really reflect 
upon your relationship right now with the unknown. When you think of something that you haven't yet stepped into, or maybe something completely and entirely new, or something really, really unfamiliar, what comes to mind? What are your first thoughts that tend to arise? Do you kind of think about, ooh, I'm cringing at the thought of trying something new right now or not knowing what's going to happen, right? Or maybe this excites you, the thought of embracing the unknown and surrendering to what is really just lights your soul up and you just feel so energized by the thought of this. Or maybe you're somewhere in between. It might scare you a little bit, but also really, it's really thrilling and exhilarating at the same time. I feel like every day is an unknown. You do not know what is going to happen today, tomorrow, two months from now, three months from from now. I mean, this life this experience, this human experience that we are moving through together, nobody really truly knows what is going to happen from here on forward, right? And I feel like to really step into the present moment and truly enjoy it and embrace the unknown, we have to really peel back the layers of of fear that we might be putting on ourselves and really wearing, right? Almost like a cloth that we wear as a form of protection. Because when, when you lift that veil, when you're able to really welcome in whatever is present and whatever is going on and really enjoy the process and move and take it step by step, I feel like you'll you'll be able to experience life in a whole new different way. I actually, I'm a math tutor and every single day my students will come in with different moods and wear different attitudes and my days are pretty unknown. So, you know, our tutoring groups can go one way or the other depending on how my students are showing up, how their mornings went, how their times during recess went, and they can come to the tutoring session maybe feeling upset that day, maybe feeling happy, maybe feeling a bit frustrated or annoyed. So, and we all go through this, right? Whatever your day looks like, you may work from home, you may work in person, you may own your own business. It all comes with this little piece of uncertainty. And I think that if we learn to really let go, release the need for control, then we're really opening ourselves up to receiving more. Because here's the thing about control. Your need for control actually stems from fear itself. It's that underlying fear within you that if you don't know what's going to happen, then something inside, there's going to be chaos. There might be some type of turmoil going on. And to avoid that, you you cling on to this idea that, oh, I'm just going to plan everything out to the T to where I know exactly what is going to happen, right? And You may go through the list in your head of what ifs or what might occur and just spiral that again and again throughout your mind or you take it step by step by step and it's almost like you are taking your life onto a chessboard and you're planning out strategic moves to avoid, you know, an obstacle or avoid a hardship or something that is going to block you. You might end up planning for the future and worrying about the future at the same time. And then your mind goes elsewhere and starts to think about 
your past and maybe how you can learn from the past to avoid any sort avoid those obstacles that you've stumbled upon when your mind is fueled by the need to control it often creates chaos in your mind it's like we are trying to overstep something and avoid chaos but then we actually end up creating more more chaos and more resistance because when we aren't surrendering when we aren't releasing or letting go of control we are in a sense blocking ourselves and putting up more barriers to what possibilities can actually come our way because instead of trusting the process and trusting what life has to offer and what it's going to bring us, we, we become more narrow-minded in a sense and focused on our own plans when in actuality the universe has so much greater plans that we might not even see yet. We might not even, you know, know exactly how to get there and that is some one aspect of the unknown. We may not know the how, we may not know the what yet, but that's the joy in it. We, I think when you find joy and the magic in the unknown, that's when your life starts to shift. With all the unknowns in our lives, it's such a great practice to surrender and to practice surrendering and releasing and letting go. So I have been practicing trust and practicing how to trust myself and trust the universe because when doubt gets in the way or fear, it often blindsides me to the truth that is. And that is that everything that I have worried about or everything that I feared, it actually ended up turning out awesome in the end. Now, I'm not going to say every single time, <laughs> but a majority of the time it has now that I'm reflecting back on it. And I'm thinking, wow, what was I so worried about or what was I so hung up on? It's just like going into my very first retreat that I hosted over the summer, it makes me think back on just the amount of just nerves that I had. I mean, it was so unknown, right? You don't know how the ladies are going to interact with one another, if they're going to even like each other. You don't know if there's going to be like a weather thing and it might rain or snow or you don't know if, you know, maybe your plans don't turn out just to the T. And it was my very first time hosting a retreat, so everything about that experience wasn't un unknown for me. But I think that if I showed up to that retreat and was wanting that control or was just in my anxious state of mind, that wasn't my intention. That wasn't the whole... Um, that wasn't the experience that I wanted the ladies to, to get out of it, right? So I really needed to practice surrender, to practice releasing the need to control, to show up in a way that was authentic, to show up in a way that was aligned to my higher self. And let me tell you, the ego is probably somewhere in the back of your mind, wanting to take the reins. You might be wondering how I was able to do that, even through all those unknowns, even through the fear and the doubt that was going on in my mind. Here are a few tools that you can take with you to practice surrendering. Okay, now one way is to use your imagination visualize yourself letting go. Maybe start to visualize those anxious thoughts being blown about and rustled through the wind. Maybe visualize them in the form of leaves 
Or maybe your thoughts and your need for control becomes the water and it becomes more flowy, more fluid, more expressive. Or maybe just visualize yourself feeling fully free. What does that look like for you? Are you running down a field of flowers? Are you running in the sand on a beach and dancing in the sunset? Are you traveling the world and diving into different cultures and meeting different people and connecting your heart with others? Or are you simply relaxing and swinging in a hammock and just fully relaxing your body and melting into the cloth and the fibers of that hammock? Just really visualize surrendering. What does surrendering look like for you? What does it feel like? Another image that comes to mind is riding a horse and just simply allowing the horse to take you where it wants to go. So, you know, the horse is in full control here and you are simply embracing what is embracing the ride, embracing the experience. And I think that it's a beautiful metaphor to compare to what surrendering is. And so if you want to visualize yourself riding a horse, that would be a very wonderful way to connect you to the energy of surrendering. All right, now the next practice that you can do is affirmations. I know you might have heard this one before, but even stating the affirmation to yourself can really reaffirm what you want, what you crave, what you desire. If you want to surrender more, tell yourself that you are and that you will. Tell yourself, I surrender, I release control, I trust in the universe. Tell yourself that everything will be okay. The universe is on your side. The universe has your back. Tell yourself that you are aligned with freedom. You allow your authentic self to shine through and be connected to the voice of your inner guidance. Allow the words to really settle in your heart space and allow them to take up room in there. Really feel the effects and tell yourself these words day after day and sooner or later you will feel the difference. Okay, now one last little tool that I will leave you with is to go a day unplanned. Mm hmm. Yep, you heard me right. Go a day without planning anything. No to do list, no wish list, no <laughs> task. Just allow yourself to be in the flow of life. If you wake up that day feeling like, hmm, you know what? I'm really wanting to go to the park. Go to the park. That wasn't planned. That was what you were feeling into. You stroll for a bit, get some vitamin D, and then maybe you're feeling some tea. <laughs> so go to your local tea shop. Order something that you've never ordered before. And sip your tea and delight. Maybe after the tea, you're feeling some books to read but you don't really have some at your house that you really like, so you decide to go to the library and glance over some books on the bookshelves and just pick up something random, <laughs> anything, and trust that it was the book for you. Do things unexpected. Surprise yourself. And sure enough, the more that you show the universe that you are just in this full-on trust mode, the more that it's going to bring you abundance, show you things that you've never seen before. And you are just going to be oh, so magnetic to the things that you desire in your life. 
And sure enough, you're actually going to create more space for these things. Because remember, if you're clinging on to that need to control, then you're going to end up constricting yourself. But if you let loose, surrender a bit, you're going to become more expansive, more open, more inviting. All right, that was all for this podcast episode today. I hope that y'all have enjoyed it. If you haven't already, go ahead and leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. I'd really appreciate it. Have an amazing rest of your week. I will see y'all in the next one. It's going to be a Valentine's Day special and I cannot wait for it. Bye.